Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, I finally get the QSP Penguin, a new Taravantium Valley song, and a survey of colorful folders. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. I'm Bob DeMarco. Uh, my favorite comment from the week was from my good friend Shane Gables on the Summer Weight Folders episode. He said, Bob, I always say that if the knife is too heavy, you just ask your wife to carry it in her purse. And I saw that and it made me laugh for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, almost no knife is too heavy. Now, if you saw the Phil Harvey interview, maybe you would disagree with me, but I'd say almost no knife is too heavy. And two, I've been doing that when we go to the pool. You know, I just go in my bathing suit, but I have to have my wallet for my insurance card and ID and that kind of thing. And I have to have my phone, but uh, I don't want them sitting out on the table when I'm swimming. So honey, can you put these in the purse? And to me, it's like the great payback for all those years of uh, being with girls who don't have pockets in their clothing. And I was always uh, the movable, you know, I was always the Sherpa because I had the pockets and it was, Bob, can you put this in my pocket? Can you carry this? Can you carry this? Can you? And uh, now it's been reversed. And, and Shane, I hear you, buddy. Uh, that's what I've been doing. And I think maybe you were making a, a different kind of joke. But it's funny to me on several levels. And uh, yeah, that's me these days. Honey, can I drop this in your purse? All right. Uh, next uh, is a pocket check right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Let me tell you what I was carrying today. Uh, I've been kind of, um, well, geez, I was going to say I've been crushing on Demco knives, but, I, it, you know, and a lot of others. But uh, Cold Steel's recently, again, are rotating back into view um, just because, I don't know, they're consistently awesome. And they have the new um, Engage series out, which uh, the lock, the Atlas lock does interest me. The Engage knife itself does not. Um, I, I, I just don't see myself getting it. I know that sounds crazy, uh, but it has had me looking at all my other Cold Steel's. And um, so today I've been carrying one I really don't carry much at all, and that's my 8015. Just a great uh, design and knife from Andrew Demko. It's got that scorpion lock on the back, works like this. You just lift up on this titanium bar. I think in this case it's aluminum on the, on the cold steel. It's aluminum, I believe. It also hinges slightly differently on the cold steel, uh, but you just lift that up. It pulls the pin out of the notch on the back of the blade there. And you just close it. This has major fidget factor, of course, um, but it's beefy fidget, if you will, because you are jamming your finger between these two things and and fighting against a tough spring to open that up. At least mine is. I I, ha I must admit, since I don't carry this much, um, every time I uh, do pick it up and open it up and use it, it takes a couple times to warm this knife up. And I don't know if that's warming me up to the knife or the knife up to the world. Uh, so today I was carrying this 8015. Another great thing about this is that if you want this knife, it's either the cold steel or it's hunting down uh, on the secondary market and 8015 for who knows how much, a lot. Uh, and and by that, I mean uh, Demco, you know, out of the Demco shop, 8015. They don't make these anymore, I don't believe. Um, I, I believe it's now just in the hands of cold steel and the people who got them before cold steel, uh, when they came out of the Demco shops, but just a great knife. And really, truly, when you're gripping this knife and squeezing it shut, you are enhancing that lock. People talk about the, um, frame lock being that way. Uh, meaning when you, when you grip a frame lock, you're reinforcing the lock here by holding it shut. That is true, but uh, even more so on this knife where you have that big pin going through the back strap. Uh, so carried this today. Such a great knife. I'm going to start carrying it more. Uh, I have the G10 behind the clip sanded down. So now it's not, uh, it doesn't, doesn't make me cringe when I remove it from my pocket. 
Uh, I had another folder on me today. One I just can't put down. Uh, this is the Off Grid Knives Black Mamba version two. A beautiful, I'll say it reverse Tonto. No, it's not. It's a bellied Warncliffe. Uh, and it's in this really nice um, golf ball dimpled sort of uh, black wash titanium package. Uh, made by Best Tech, just awesome. These awkward knives are so cool. Uh, if I had one, one, um, not beef, but suggestion for off grid knives, it would be on some of your G10 versions. Start adding color since they all have black blades. It'd be so cool to start putting Jade G10 on those suckers, or maybe uh, doing special runs uh, on the folders with more micarta. Um, I, I love these. <clears throat> I really love these off-grid knives. And this little sucker here is a, uh, it's just beefy and um, it's got that perfect tip. It's a nice little uh, utility size at about three, is this three? Yeah, uh, uh, three, three point three and a quarter or so inches long. It's got a great point. This is a great blend of EDC that you could push to, uh, you know, push, push comes to shove you could use this in a self-defense sort of way to great uh great effect no doubt it has a great grip but really it's just this beautiful titanium handle and this m390 blade that just well so that's that makes up the whole thing great package a uh, great deep carry pocket clip everything about this knife is great and it's fidget beyond belief and so this is a good one for when i'm editing video at work Okay, uh, I also had in my pocket, almost forgot about this one because you drop it in and it's so light, you almost forget about it. But this is the Station 9 um, number 4, based on the old lapel daggers from the OSS and other clandestine organizations in World War II. I love these little things. Uh, this is very sharp. This is VG-10 blade steel. Uh, you've got very aggressive, um, it looks like a field ready to be harvest of jimping uh, ready to be harvested there see that uh, let me get it in focus all right uh at this little tiny grip here uh offers quite a lot of gription you can really bear down on this and uh of course i've added this little lanyard here for putting around your finger so it's really short up in the hand uh i have we have <laughs> we have a watermelon that is slated for destruction or uh, later today and I've been walking by it and just sort of taking pot shots with this little knife and stabbing at it. And you, and you can do a sewing machine thing with that, with this little tiny blade uh, really well into the tough hide of, of that watermelon because it's so thin and diamond-like in cross-section and so sharp. It's a really slashy type blade. I mean, you, could, you can cut paper with it. It's a really good little blade. Um, and it just slips in uh really really well so i don't know if anyone has noticed me doing that uh, in the house but it's it, it must i know how it looks okay uh but i'm just trying it out <clears throat> and no doubt that's not a, a super long knife so if you were well i don't want to get into that but it's not a super long knife but you could cause some severe pain with it and you could definitely do some damage with it um lastly today i had the 1558 Revere. This is by Master Bladesmith. Um, Josh. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. I'm 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 uh, I'm spacing on his name, and I'll get I'll get it in there. I'll remember it in just a second. Fisher, um, and uh, Josh Fisher. Just a great, gorgeous knife. This is a. Uh, he considers it a sort of hunter. Uh, I consider it a sort of fighter. Look at that recurve blade, that point, that long swedge down the back for uh, would make for a great penetrator uh, if you needed it uh, as such. Uh, in When you look at it from the top, you've got a nice swelled out handle towards the Ricasso then, and then two semi-deep scoops towards the back where it flares back out. Just a great, uh, you know, for your smaller fingers back there, it gives it a... a, a tighter grip area um you got the 1558 in the blade um this is what is it 52 100 i believe 52 100 steel and micarta um i love it i'm a, i'm in love with this knife uh, it is taking a while for this sheath it's hard with recurves and this sheath he put the grommets so close 
uh, that it is taking a while to sort of, yeah, I'll say it cut a path out of there. So, so I frequently uh, strop this knife just in case I'm dulling it with the Kydex until it, uh, it has a nice groove there. All right. So that's what I was carrying today. What were you carrying today? Let me know. I had uh, the 8015 from Cold Steel, the Off Grid Knives Black Mamba version two, the Station 9 number five, and or was that four? Number four, and the 1558 Revere. I had the Revere on me. What were you carrying? Let me know. Drop it in the comments or call the listener line, 724-466-4487. Let me know what you were carrying. Uh, I always say it's a great way to open my eyes to uh, knives I haven't considered, possibly. Here's your fidget factor. See that? Oh, uh, I failed in front of the camera. All right. Such a great knife. Love that AD-15. Uh, though not for light shorts. Not for light shorts. Uh, so I had to do a little wardrobe change. Uh, so... Speaking of wardrobe change, speaking of changes, uh, coming up here in my state in two days on Friday, I will legally be able to carry this. Well, maybe not this one because it's double edged, actually, uh, but I will be able to carry the hell out of this. Excuse the French. Uh, this is the old uh, TR3 from ProTech. It's an automatic knife. I live in the state of Virginia and on Friday, July 1st, 2022, we will be uh, legally allowed to carry our automatics, which I'm not even sure if we're legally allowed to own. <laughs> Just, well, by the time you're listening to this, you know, I might be on the run. Oh, heaven forbid. All right. So uh, another thing uh, that I've been noticing, you know, I've been talking about cold steel. It's I recently got uh, the Voyager XL drop point. And what I've been noticing is the value of the Voyager. And I got rid of my clip point and Tonto a uh, couple of years back uh, when I acquired my XL uh, recons and damn it, I wish I didn't do that. So now I think I'm in a stage of reacquiring those two, uh, perhaps with serrations. The clip point is now hard to find. Don't know what you got till it's gone people. Uh, but I did get this a couple of weeks back. I showed it off. This is the, the drop point. It's like a barong. I love this thing, the Voyager XL. Well, I used this all this past weekend in clearing the vines. The Virginia Creeper, the Grapevine, and the, what is it, English Ivy have been subsuming our property. And, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a huge, vast swath of land, but uh, it's enough that it's a pain. And it's always uh, lunging, reaching for the house. And uh, I don't want my house to be devoured. So this was the hewing tool. Is that the right word? Hewing? Hewing? I was hewing down. I don't know. I was chopping down vines with this all weekend. And it's so great. This Aus 10A is great steel. Now, it was very soft, um, somewhat fibrous, but very soft material. But still, this blade steel uh, really worked great. Uh, my other Voyagers are in CTS, XHP, and... Um, Moss 8. Uh, I'm thinking I need to get the Tonto, re-get the Tonto next, but I will get this one fully serrated. Um, I think I think there's a benefit to that, and I think I would actually use it. Like for years, I used my XL Vaquero Grande serrated uh, back in the uh, backyard. I have kind of retired that. Uh, I think that's more museum status at this point, a remember when kind of piece. But uh, yeah. Don't ever forget how awesome Cold Steel XLs are. And they're still still keeping them good, even though uh, still still making them well, even though someone else is making them. All right. Uh, next up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to talk some Knife Life news and state of the collection. But first, I just want to say if you want to join us on Patreon and be a part of uh, getting exclusive content and uh, a monthly knife giveaway, uh, you can do so right here by scanning that QR code or going to Patreon. A quickest way to get there is to go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's a very simple address. It's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Looking for a new knife? How about one from Benchmade, Spyderco, Wii, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. 
Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Yeah, man, there's some sweet knives in that little interstitial. I, I would like them all. I will take them all, especially, I don't know, that Benchmade Auto looked really cool. I don't even know what that one's called. Anyway, uh, let's do some Knife Life News. Teravantium. Teravantium. Uh, no, it's not that, uh, it's not unobtainium from another planet. It is the... Um, dendritic cobalt alloy uh created by terrain 365 now terrain 365 is a patrick ma uh company patrick ma is the guy who started um uh the uh company prometheus blade works uh, before that he he started um uh the the company that made the dauntless um uh, which I'm spacing right now, but uh, Dauntless, a great knife. And some of those design cues from the Dauntless carry over into the knives that he now makes uh, with uh, with uh, a Terrain 365. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, having a senior moment here. But anyway, the, the real interesting part of the story is last year, he came out with this incredible uh, Invictus Bally song, and taking the Invictus knife, uh, so so beloved and turning it into a ballet song you can see all of the design cues here perfectly translated into the format but now uh, he's taken it from prometheus blade works brought it into the terrain 365 uh, line and in doing so terrain 365's usp is that it is all uh, rust proof super rust resistant i don't know how you want to put it but uh, they use all titanium hardware and uh, handling and, and parts and non-rustable parts and then the blade steel is not steel it's this uh dendritic cobalt alloy that they call teraventium and uh so they have that valley song now in this format and I, who doesn't think that's cool i do especially considering uh, the history of the valley song which was a, 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 a nautical knife created uh, by filipino sailors to be used one-handed when you're up in the rigging and you you need to open up your knife so the fact that this thing can go out to sea and actually do that job without rusting, uh, I find, closes the loop quite nicely. Uh, Patrick Ma, he's an interesting guy, and uh, um, I, I I don't know. It's cool to see this thing come out. I don't have any Terrain 369, 365 knives. I was aiming to get the shoot knife, the ATS something something. I can't remember the the designation of that. Uh, but I was looking to get his shoot knife. It was a folding version of the Bob Loveless shoot knife. It was also in the Teravantium uh, blade material. Never got that. Uh, uh, so maybe I should treat myself to this. I don't know. There's so many things I want to treat myself to. But I like the idea of a valley song that cannot rust because it 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 loops back to the very beginning and uh, and sort of improves on the initial reason for making the thing in the first place all right next up tops knives every year since 2017 has had an employee contest it's a really cool idea an employee design contest where they will put out some um, requirements for the design and then ask uh, the employees to submit a design and then uh, the winning design gets put into production uh, there have been some cool knives done that way. Uh, this year's knife is called the Sheep Creek. Uh, they wanted an 8-inch or under fixed blade knife with a sheep's foot or worn cliff blade. Uh, employee Dylan came up with this beauty here. So this is a really nice looking sheep's foot blade. It's got a very ergonomic handle and it presents that stri perfectly straight edge and that utility point. It looks like it. it, it places it at a great angle to take full advantage of that straight edge kind of angled downward off the knuckles i really like it but then if you're coming up to use that tip for utility cuts detailed utility cuts there is a jimped swale right at the head of the right at the forward portion of the spine of the blade and that not only looks cool yes i will grant you that but it's a great place to put your forefinger or your thumb if you're reaching forward uh, with a with a power tip cut 
utility cut on that. So a cool looking knife. Congratulations, Dylan. You have a knife in production with one of the coolest blades out there or coolest uh, knife makers out there tops. There you go, Jim. Thank you. He, he put up a really cool picture of how it fits in the hand and uh, the way it, uh, you know, presents that straight edge at a nice angle and that tip at a very useful angle. And now this one is presented in a new finish for them it's a distressed finish called rough terrain the rough terrain finish and this is uh 154 blade steel which is a steel they use frequently on smaller more edcable fixed blade knives that i i guess they figure as a utility knife you're gonna have it close to your person um possibly in the waistband maybe or maybe i'm just being selfish and thinking they were thinking of me uh but it's a great blade steel for not rusting and you know if it's if you're carrying it close to your body and doing hard work you can tend to sweat and even the evaporation of sweat can get through the kydex uh get through the drainage holes of kydex i should say and uh you know so 154 takes care of that so there you go the sheep's creek from tops the new uh, the 2022 employee design contest winner. Uh, look forward to seeing that come out in production. All right, still to come, we're going to take a look at uh, the new knife I got this week, uh, one that's been a long time coming, no doubt. And then a quick survey of colorful folders right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. I just want to personally thank Jeff Bezos and Amazon for reminding me that I really have always wanted the QSP Penguin. Uh, it's been in my cart for a long time. They keep telling me when the price goes up or the price goes down or it becomes available or not. And finally, I said, OK, OK, maybe if I just buy this, they'll leave me alone. Uh, so that's why he's got rocket ships and 700 million dollar yachts <laughs> so there you go and that's why i have this qsp penguin this knife has gotten so much good press over the past two and a half years or so and uh it it's no wonder why now qsp first came on my radar and probably most of ours with the parrot a 20 dollar little uh drop point that has a relatively generic and simple design but is just an amazing twenty dollar knife uh, by by all accounts, and they continued to make knives uh, in various forms. But then when this one came out, it it sort of really got a lot of people's attention. And I could be mistaken, but that's so rare that I'm probably not. And uh, I think that this was the first iteration it came out in. This is the D two and denim. Uh, I believe this thing first came out in denim micarta it's either that or it's the first time i ever heard of denim micarta one way or the other um so don't take that as fact uh but anyway uh, a really really great uh sheep's foot blade here and yes that denim micarta was the main draw and i love it i really love it i have one other denim micarta and that is the um the petrified fish victor it's a it's got a totally different look totally different denim i gotta say <coughs> the denim on top is the denim you would see in hard working um gear M maybe a, a train engineer wears the denim on top the denim on bottom is on a uh you know beautiful young woman is how I see it. It's that kind of denim. This is the sort of workaday denim. Almost looks like it's got stripes in it. And uh, you you say, why does the denim matter so much? Well, it's interesting because this knife has come out in countless iterations. You can get this in a titanium frame lock version now uh, with a premium steel. Um, you can get it in numerous different steels and hand materials like, uh, I'm sorry, handle materials like brass and other metals but you can also get um 
other micartas and g10s and this thing is just a super collectible knife if that's if that's your thing i know <clears throat> some people find a knife and a design that they love say like the delica or the endura and then they go to town on it or or the um uh, the PM2. I, I love keeping up with cutlery lovers. PM2 uh, addiction. He's trying to get one in every single steel they've ever made it in, and he's got, I think, all but one. Same thing with this. If you really love this design and you want to have a high value um, collection, I have a pretty sprawling high value collection. But you want a high value collection of one knife in particular, and it's this one. You can get it a million different ways. I do love that. Uh, but this has been. Um, this past weekend, I installed a new screen door. I know you heard me talk about that last year. And my dog uh, destroyed both doors because I got lazy and slept on a great idea I had to keep him from doing that, but still make it so he could come in and out at will. And I just kind of slept on actually executing. And so this year, I'm doing a savior job. And this was my unboxing, unpackaging, clamshell, and all, you know, um, actually trimming plexiglass, which was a lovely job. Uh, this did some of that. Uh, scoring plexiglass, this did some of that. And I was hoping, oh, and it's hot as hell uh, and humid this week and this past weekend, and I was hoping that the micarta would get all funky from sweating and holding it and having it in my pocket. And it's like, it's brand new. So I'm wondering if they treated it or something. Or maybe my sweat is just so refined that it takes more of it uh, you know, civilized sweat. It takes more of it to to tarnish this fine, fine material. Yes, as you noticed, I put a little snake snake knot fob on it. I've been liking putting those on. It's like my little ownership. It's like a brand. Um, you're mine and you're not going anywhere. And uh, for a while, I was thinking this was going to be the junk drawer knife in the kitchen, but it's really nice. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to keep using it and carrying it for now. All right, that, that is the knife of the week. The QSP Penguin is the knife I got this week, and I am digging it. Thanks again to Amazon. Okay, so I want to take a look at some of the colorful folders I have, and, and I have to start, as I usually do, with a caveat. Now, I, am, I realize that wood is not a color, so I am not going to include these, but it, it took me a minute. Uh, I almost did. Uh, this is the, this is the um, Lion Steel. Gitano, beautiful olive wood handle. Look at that. Really nice blonde wood there. Uh, nice grains in there. Gorgeous. Uh, here is a Civivi. I think this is rosewood. If not, I know for sure this is rosewood. This is the Gadritis designed uh, boker. That's beautiful. Look at that. That's the same material that a lot of guitars use for their fretboards. Kind of a color here, or, or or definitely a handle theme, but I decided not. I'm not doing that because I'm not showing in this. I'm not showing natural micarta. I'm not showing black. I'm not showing some other sort of uh, ho hum colors. This is all about colored G10 and micarta. So uh, maybe that was just an excuse to show off some really cool wood knives. I've been digging the Civivi Praxis so much with this wooden handle recently that I'm thinking thinking I might have to get a couple more wooden handled knives or at least try and get some wooden scales for knives I already have. Love those. Love it. I'm really digging it. All right. So here we go. Colored knives, green. I'm going through four colors here. And actually, it's actually five, but one color category contains two colors. First is green. Now, I, we're going to start with the most neutral green of, uh, possible here, and that is Jade G10. Or some people just call it natural G10 because it's uncolored and you can color it basically. You can make it any color. But I have always loved the jade nature of it. Um, who doesn't love jade G10? I know there are plenty of you out there um, that think it's terrifically ugly, but appreciate its um, value in its flexibility. You know, you can take this and dye it and have whatever you want. But to me, the jade is the thing. And I've had other jades, uh, different uh, intensities. This is the only jade I think I have right now. Uh, I had a Max Ace in jade years ago. That was a cool knife I shouldn't have let go of. 
but that one had a really um i don't know it was verging on teal but it was still that jade g10 that you that i could have died but this is so neutral uh i love it excuse me also it reminds me of randy johnson's old three inch worn cliff hinderer which made me fall in love with hinderers back in the day all right so that there's that okay so next up is the the um the trm adam with this incredible g carta from gl hansen and sons it has the feel of i know we're talking about the look and the color but it has the feel of cloth it really does feel um just kind of luxurious and soft and but then you look at it and it's got this gorgeous green uh emerald really an emerald green with um a herringbone like a large herringbone that's not herringbone what is that hound's tooth or herringbone i don't know it's got some striations here uh in a sort of a an organic chevron pattern concentric organic <laughs> chevron pattern in purple it's just it's stunning to me and it was a gift and i appreciate that gift and it's exactly what i wanted <laughs> you know so uh thank you marianne um, but that green next to the black handle, and I think the DLC on the TRMs are actually uh, is actually really cool. It's hard to look at. It's hard to kind of see. It looks kind of gray, looks kind of silver, looks kind of black. It's kind of what looking into a black hole must be like. Um, but uh, okay, so there's that. I'm not going to wax philosophical there uh, on that DLC, but really love that green and then this is the ultimate green this is uh the tr or the i'm sorry the monterey bay knives turbo designed by peter carey and uh i had it modified by the knife modders in that high voltage green let me see if i can change the background a little so you so you might that doesn't really do it uh but it is a beautiful uh electric green um next to a black washed blade it is just stunning to me uh it reminds me a bit of the statue of liberty it's sort of that color that you get when you have that severe patina on bronze and copper and um and those kind of materials that that beautiful green uh what is the blade steel on this i think this is m390 doesn't matter. It just looks really great in that black next to that green. Uh, green is a difficult color for this show because I have that green background. That's going to change shortly as my brother is working on a leather background for me. Leather. And it'll be somewhat neutral and it will show off colors better. But for now, uh, those are the green folders. All right. Next up is red. I have some really... I have an affinity for especially the darker red. First, we're going to start with the um, Demco Knives 8020 in red G10. This little honey is not so little, actually. Uh, I got this from uh, Rivers at River Edge Cutlery in Ohio. Uh, uh, Lavender Pants 26 helped me get this. He sent me a message. This is... Uh, two years ago now sent me a message saying uh, found this at my local knife shop and there there were eight of them or six of them and this red just drew me in the red and also i like the uh the non-hole blade on this knife most 8020s have the hole there i like that this one doesn't i think it makes the blade look longer um <clears throat> for what it's worth and really really excellent action but that dark red just drew me in and I've been tempted from time to time to take those scales off and lightly dye them blue and see if I could get some sort of a deep purple. But I kind of don't want to mess up these red scales. And I'm not sure what will happen if I, if I do. And I know you only know if you try. And I would probably like the complexity and the layering of color if I could, if I could manage it. But uh, yeah, just beautiful dark red G10. And then, so all of my reds are dark. Uh, that's not true. I have a Finch in a bright red. Uh, my, my Finch Devil's Finger has a bright red uh, handle. But 
I'm not looking at those. I'm looking at this more maroon now that I'm looking, now that I'm qual qualifying it. All right, CJRB is next. The Scoria, again, the color next to the black blade is what sells it to me. I, I desperately love this knife. I don't know what to say. This is one of those uh, kind of inexpensive knives. Uh, actually, it's about 80 bucks, so it's not inexpensive, but... It came to me inexpensively because it was a traded knife, and I felt no pain in trading away this the uh, Civivi Riffle, even though I did like that knife. Uh, this has really uh, won me over. These contoured micarta handle scales, that's canvas micarta. Uh, they're very nice to the touch. I, I love how they're contoured in this direction. And this micarta, you can see the... Uh, some of that epoxy, that's what makes it white. And it does really soak up uh, your your oils, like you can see on this side where it's gotten a lot more uh, touch and play. Um, but those are, uh, it's darker, but these are also different cuts of my card. I'm wondering if this is the inside of this cut. No matter, I really like the handle. I love the way it feels. I love the way it looks next to the black. Maroon and black were my high school uh, colors. I've always liked that color combination. Um, so I, that's not why I didn't get this because my high school colors, but, uh, that's kind of incidental. Love that color combination, the black and the red. Another great red micarta knife is a custom job I had done by Tom Engelson. Uh, if you don't know him, he goes by vantage point blade works on Instagram. And I mean, that's his company name. And he specializes in rehandling um, Emerson's, but he also does other knives, and he does a beautiful job. Micarta, G10, wood, you name it, he does a beautiful job. And this Elvia is a special knife. I've always thought so, and I thought I had to get the, the black G10 handles off of here. Uh, so I did, and I had uh, Mr. Engelson uh, hook it up with these really nice uh, canvas Micarta handles which he contoured and polished uh, i think this is double dyed so it's got a really nice color to it and great feel it fattens up the handle a little bit which is good for me because this is the kind of knife that if you're using it uh, you really want it locked in there securely i have a little modification here um, that i got from a dude on i can't remember his name uh, that i got on uh Instagram, if you message me, I'll let you know who it is, but it uh, waves open that blade. Also, it looks cool, but it waves open that blade. Um, that Elvia, that's definitely a fighting blade, self-defense knife. You just kind of grip it tightly in the hand with the tip down and the edge in, and you take advantage of the arcing motions of your, and, and, the, and the adrenaline, and, and you thwart your attacker. But again, uh, I felt like a knife like this deserves this beautiful... There's something about deep red and maroon to me that has that sort of uh, same sacred feel as like deep, deep purple. It's sort of holy, sort of royal, sort of mysterious. I don't know. You're like, whatever, Bob. I went to art school. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'm prone to that kind of thinking from time to time. All right. Last up in the red category is the absolutely stunning uh, uh, the absolutely stunning grooved bone that you get in the night crawler bone on the finch knives 1929 great little knife great little could be fifth pocket could be back pocket could be bottom of the pocket or just could be clipped to the top of your pocket but that's uh those are the other ways i like to carry this little knife great little knife with a little scalpeline fully flat ground 154 cm blade with a great flipper love the flippers on the finch knives because they act as inverse choils that's what i call them inverse choils tm uh where you can kind of place your finger there uh and choke up for for the kind of work you're doing but interestingly and i'm just discovering this now that i'm looking the angle of that does present the blade downward in a nice way so that you can take full advantage of your blade uh, angle and edge but really, what am I talking about? This night crawler bone here. I'm going to close up the blade so I don't cut myself. That night crawler bone. Look at that. It looks fleshy to me. The way they died to that bone, it looks fleshy. It does look like 
a nightcrawler, an earthworm. It's got dimension and, and you know, the light and the dark. It looks like there's blood flowing underneath it. I love this. And then they, of course, they grooved it like a nightcrawler. So it's kind of textured like it. Um, and then it's on both sides. Oh, I love it. That's one thing I love about dyed bone is the dimension you get. You get depth. Um, I did. This is this is the only real uh, bone here. I did. I decided not to bring any traditionals in because I have, I have, so I have a lot of traditional knives, and maybe that that's a different that's a different look at the handle scales of my traditional knives. But um, just had to talk about that that deep red. Oh, it's so nice. I, I highly uh, recommend Finch knives, and one thing I love about them is the character. The character of those knives is great because they are sort of importing or exporting. They're importing into their flipper designs the um, all the design cues and concepts of old knives. Or you could reverse that and say they're designing old knives and bringing this modern uh, bearing flipper into it to change, improve, update. And man, I cannot keep up with them. I'd love to have every single model and I need to, uh, I need to catch back up. I've lost track with them in terms of buying like that Chernobyl ant. They're a uh, new, new ish. They have a lot of models. They're new ish, um, flipper, uh, sod buster. So nice, man. They really, they stretched out the sod buster lines and made it a little bit more elegant and just as useful. Uh, so anyway, Finch knives. Uh, but those are the red knives, my beloved red knives. Next category is the pink and purple. Now, pink and purple, these are knives that I've started. Uh, I don't have too many of them, but they definitely uh, have only been here in the last almost 12 years. So since, uh, since my daughters have come around, um, purple and pink, has shown up now and again in my knife collection. And I, 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 I've I, always loved purple as a color, but I have never liked pink. And then I have grown to love it uh, because there was no avoiding pink uh, when, my, when my girls came along. And it was funny because there was a trend in baby clothes for girls when my first daughter came along, this like brown and muted mauve and, and olive green and olive, like this totally... Um, androgynous look for girls clothes and i and so at that point i was craving pink i'm like give me pink like i didn't give birth to an it i gave birth to a girl and i want people to know it and you know that's why they do the blue and the pink because when your baby's a little little baby no one can tell what the hell they are so you gotta you gotta dress them up in such a way that people have cues oh i love your little girl you know i see the pink so anyway <clears throat> uh, pink and purple i'm gonna start with purple this was a, a knife given to me by my daughter um of course it wasn't it was picked out of a catalog and purchased by my wife but this is a purple delica um great knife this is the delica four fully flat ground that's a vg10 blade all all the trimmings that you know um from a traditional delica four but that really nice uni uh, uh multi-directional textured purple handle i love this uh at the time my daughter got this for me, she was naming everything. Everything had, an, had to have a name, and she named my knives. And so this one was named Sleepy Bear. So this, this particular Delica in purple will forever be Sleepy Bear. A great, great utility knife, this Delica. This rode in my back pocket for a long time. Um, with a, I had a gray fob on it for a while that uh, just sort of got funky, and I took it off. But a great knife that is Sleepy Bear, the Purple Delica for. Uh, next was a gift from the great and powerful Doug Ritter. And this is his design, the uh, uh, Ritter Hogue RSK Mark I Mini. This is the Mini Mark I in that beautiful purple g -mascus. I love it. It's purple, gray, and black uh, G10, you know, layered G10. And then it's sculpted and contoured and milled with that really awesome radiating concentric circle pattern. And just look at that. It is a thing to behold. Uh, actually, this little one makes me want to get the big version of this or another of their G-mascuses. Uh, I love the way it looks. 
it it has a semi organic feel. It reminds me sort of of wood when you contour these layered G10s and micartas. Um, but that radiating pattern that comes from the pivot really is the grip, and it grips you in all directions because it's concentric circles radiating from the pivot, and then also rays uh, that emanate from from that. If that makes sense. And of course, you've got the beautiful 20 CV blade with that uh, high height saber grind, very thin and slicey. Just a great utility knife. The whole concept behind the Ritter Griptilian and now Ritter Hogue RSK Mark I uh, by uh, Doug Ritter was to have a very high performing high end steel in a budget handle and uh, so that it could be packed away and you could use it and carry it and get all of the high performance out of a um, super steel without carrying your Sabenza around basically because he had and loved Sabenzas and wanted to carry something with that super steel but kind of was nervous about taking his $400 knife into the field to bang around on or use as a survival tool. So uh, that was the genesis of the RSK Mark I slash Ritter Griptilian. Um, love that knife. You got to go, go to Knifeworks. It's a Knifeworks exclusive. I don't know how they manage that, but uh, great uh, iterations in orange and black and different blades and different handle colors. Check it out. Uh, next, uh, we move into the pink. I'm keeping pink and purple in their one uh, separate category or, or uh, their one unified category, I should say. Uh, next up is another named knife, uh, but I named this one. Uh, this was the first knife my daughter's uh, my first daughter ever got for me this is the um, ontario knives rat number two just an amazing i love this knife i love this knife much better than my uh large than my rat one this is the aus 8 version this steel i have always been able to keep this razor sharp my mark uh my rat one has always been a problem i don't know if they jacked up the heat treat or whatever but Never been able to get that one razor sharp. This one, I've always been able to keep razor sharp. I love the black coating next to the pink. That's how you sell me pink, is black and pink. So this one is Pinky Tuscadero after the character Fonzie's girlfriend in Happy Days. Um, she always had like a pink skirt and a black jacket. And and uh, I always thought she was kind of hot, I got to say. So this is Pinky Tuscadero. Um, you can see this has been used much, muchly over the years. You can see lines in the marks in the blade coating. Um, I like that. It, it shows the history. But I also like how the GRN, I love that this is one of the few GRN handles I really love, uh, has remained pristine. It, it's I guess it's easy to clean, but I, I feel like it hasn't picked up a lot of dirt. And this, I don't think I've ever cleaned it. Got that little fob on there. That'll always stay there. It sort of completes the package to me. All right. Last up of the pink knives is the famous and infamous uh, Broken Skull. This is this is the one uh, when I first started the Knife Junkie podcast in November of 2018. And for several years after that, I was carrying this in my waistband every day, all the time. And uh, with the with the tagline there's no excuse not to have four inches of super steel on you at all times because this thing is so thin i've had this in several iterations i had um i had i had the uh this is the xhp version cts xhp i also had this in the coyote tan or no no uh the the dark brown earth i gave that to my brother vic he loves his uh i've i think i've had two of these pink ones i think i lost the first pink one uh but anyway i bought the pink uh before we went away on a trip overseas well over it, it was uh it was in punta cana i'll say it i guess i can never go back there uh no but uh, i didn't want to go there without a knife and uh these days i don't i don't do that these days i'll go somewhere without a knife and i'll either pick one up there or i'll travel with something like an opinel or, or swiss army knife uh, but in those days, I had to have four inches of locking super steel on me. So I took this and uh, carried it the whole time, brought it back. And then we went two years later and I carried the same knife. And it actually is an 
excellent, excellent utility. This is a this is a great food knife. I mean, it's really thin, a fully flat ground. You've got great edge geometry, super slicey. Works great as a food knife. That's primarily what it was used for. Uh, also got carried in the waistband uh, because I didn't want to show the clip. Uh, and then I got one of these snaggle tooth MFs on there. This is a, a an aluminum one anodized pink, perfectly, pretty much perfectly matching the pink of this G10, though it's dirty uh, on this side because it wore, you know, it was up against denim so much. It just sort of stained the G10. But if you look at it on the uh, show side, it's perfectly matched. Great knife. I love this knife. And I don't think you can get this anymore. The pink uh, broken skull. Uh, you can still now they have now they call it the range boss and it's in a cheaper steel, I think. Um, but it's the same layout with the four inch clip point blade and the and the thin. It was originally the uh, it was originally in the all steel version with the fake stag handles. It was called called the Lone Star Hunter, I think. And then and then it became the broken skull with the thin G10 and the XHP steel. And now it's in the 4116, I think, and GRN, but it's the same layout. So they're getting a lot of uh, a lot of mileage out of this uh, profile here. So those are the pink and purple knives. And last are probably, I don't know, I don't know if I want to call them my favorite, but they were the blue was the first color in my collection. And uh, but I'm not showing you that knife. I'm showing you these four here because. These mean more to me right now. First up, the Arcona Nettle. Uh, really, really love this one. This is a front flipper uh, designed by uh, Ivan Braganets of Russia. And this was imported by Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast and from Russia with Levon. It's got a great K110 blade. K110 steel is equivalent to D2. Very sharp slicey blade on this great front flipper never miss front flipper action here but look at that blue handle uh to me stunning it is a very fine weave like a linen micarta alternating blue and black but it was cut on a bias it appears to have been uh I take that back. <laughs> uh, it, that's just uh, it. Just appears that way due to the contouring, but you can see the black revealed through the blue as it's contoured uh, and curved in this direction. Also, it's got these cool slots milled in it, and has a really nice effect that the bright blue with the deep black together uh, just make for a sort of midnight blue appearance. Uh, with that shiny blade. I just find it fetching beyond belief. Okay, next up is a recent acquisition that um, I, I, I really like this knife. This is the Towser K. I was waiting for this to come back. Um, it came out to much applause and much uh, uh, aplomb, I guess. It, no, 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 no. That's not the right word. It came out to much applause, I guess. And uh, people love this knife. And I slept on it and didn't end up getting it. Uh, again, don't know what you got until it's gone. I thought I had the opportunity. I thought, oh, Kaiser's just making this now and that it would be. But they sold out of their initial run of it and they had to make more. They came back. I finally snagged one, 69 bucks. Oh, and you can get it in this blue rich light or you can get it in red canvas micarta. That also looks cool. But I, I, I don't have any rich light. I had to get this. Rich light is kind of a micarta-like material. Uh, but the layers are, instead of fabric, they're more paper-like. And it's compressed under high heat and pressure and epoxy, or with epoxy. And uh, it's used for countertops and other applications similar to micarta. But I love that deep blue, deep, deep gray blue. Um, and you, then you have those alternating hexagons uh, kind of carved in there. It reminds me of illustrations I've seen of the... What do they call that? The um, the the boson Hicks field, you know, um, and I'm not even going to try and explain it, uh, but it's a thing and it's in advanced physics. I guess it's in what is that? Uh, uh, people are yelling at their screen or their radios right now. It's 
it's quantum physics, you dumbass. But uh, it's uh, it reminds me of the pattern of the Higgs boson uh, that I've seen illustrated. So I kind of like that. It's trippy. What can I say? Uh, very nice um, contouring on the handle, presenting that sheep's foot blade at just the perfect angle for all sorts of utility applications. Um, and you can use that tip in a pinch. You could use that tip for sure. Uh, definitely for going through um, those tough kind of clamshell packages. So we have this linen micarta contoured. We have flat, rich light with engraving in it that I really like. Next up, my favorite uh, color blue in G10, Thunderhead Blue. Thunderhead. That's what I'm calling it, TM. Thunderhead Blue TM. This is the uh, Kubi Vagrant, one of two blade designs. They have a sheep's foot and a worn cliff. This is the worn cliff. Really love this modified worn cliff. You've got, it's all belly there, and you've got that nice scoop out of the top. Uh, great place to place your finger if you're going to use it for utility cuts. Great place for a forward thumb for real pressure for a forward cut like that, or you can use that great jimping. But love that blade shape. It's dramatic. It's useful. It has a point, but you still get that uh, sort of uh, sheep's foot kind of edge geometry. But look at that. I I'm sorry, edge profile, I meant. Look at that gorgeous handle. I love the handle scale. Uh, scales not only the color which is what we're talking about here but also man it's it's perfectly sculpted it's a great ergonomic knife i do recommend this knife highly this is the one that got me to really perk up my ears to kubi even though everyone was talking about them for years you know me i'm always kind of a late adopter it's congenital but uh this thing fits perfectly, and it's got that Thunderhead Blue that I'm so crazy about. Thunderhead Blue is a color that I have uh, that I have trademarked. I haven't trademarked it. I've coined it. I love that gray-blue color that you see uh, as soon as you cross the border from Pennsylvania into Ohio. And every time I drive home uh, to Ohio to visit my folks, it's always beautiful for my stay. But when I arrive, it rains. It's always this dark, dark gray blue over the over this beautiful bright golden ochre fields i love that color combination and that's what this kind of uh handle scale reminds me of and i see it a lot out there and i love it all right lastly i can't talk about blue without talking about denim micarta before i was talking to you about this work work a day denim micarta with the lines in it almost reminds me of something you'd see uh in in uh, like workwear or an engineer a train engineer's overalls or something like that but i want to show this one this is the beautiful uh petrified fish victor beautiful in many ways i think the k110 bowie blade is stunning it is a gorgeous clip point blade almost a trailing point clip point but it still keeps the point kind of center line and you've got that nice curved sweeping uh swedge there uh, for drama and also penetration. Ah, oh, what did I rub? I just rubbed something nasty into the blade whilst I was trying to do the opposite. I'll have to clean that later. Uh, but just a uh, beautiful blade. Great action on this. Just falls shut. This is Petrified Fish, you know. Uh, such a funny name. Petrified Fish. You know, I used to live, uh, or I didn't live, but I had a studio in Chinatown in Philadelphia. And um, Petrified Fish sounds like it might be one of the weird. They had a lot of restaurants with just very weird names. Delicious food. I mean, it was a great place to work by because lunch was always delicious. Uh, but there were weird named restaurants and Petrified Fish could easily have been one of them. But look at the denim micarta they put on this. Golly, gosh, gee, gosh, golly. It is gorgeous. Uh, looks it's it's like deep blue canvas micarta, but it's that. It's it's where denim meets canvas. You know what I mean? Some denims are uh, thicker weave, and uh, that's what this is. And it's got that bright blue color. It's just beautiful, royal blue. And the more I use it, the deeper it gets. And I have not uh, I have not done anything to accelerate it, uh, and I'm not going to. Um, I'm just going to see how this one turns out. Just beautiful. And you got the blue backspacer here. Um, that handle material, even in pictures, sold this knife for me. 
the petrified fish victor clip point blade uh you can also get this one it's also very handsome in the black blade and green micarta all right ladies and gentlemen thanks for coming down this uh this little colorful uh trip down this colorful road with me a quick survey survey just glancing glancing at them to survey what i have in terms of the colorful knives i do have a lot of silver knives i do have a lot of tan knives uh i i i, I fancy the natural micartas and the and the uh, and the coyote g10s and that kind of thing and yes those are colors but i meant something a little bit more striking than those kind of natural earth tones so there you have it ladies and gentlemen uh put some color in your knife collection and uh and see where it takes you. All right, join me on Sunday for uh, the next uh, great interview and also tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. Uh, that's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And remember, if you live in Virginia on Friday, you can carry a switchblade. You can carry an automatic knife on July 1st. So the law changes here. I'm very excited, and uh, I am going to wrap with this. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast